we have the pleasant task today of rededicating this building. Now, in ancient times, the start of constructions of a new building was usually accompanied by special ceremonies. These ceremonies help people understand the importance of the new building and explain how the workers uh, should build it to start it properly, to work together and work in harmony, as well as build the building properly so it will last for many years. The ceremony we will be doing reflects that history. Now, when all buildings were made of stone, it was very important that the first block or stone was properly cut and properly set into the ground. The reason for this is that stone was used then as the reference point to build the rest of the building. The first stone had to be square and its sides smoothly finished. It had to be placed properly in the ground so that the rest of the building could grow from it. And as that corner stone always obviously started in the corner of the building, we gave it that special name. Now, over the years, people began to see cornerstones to have a special symbolism beyond just being uh, a mere piece of stone. They saw a relationship between the construction of a building and the building of their own lives. And as a cornerstone is so essential to constructing the building properly, a symbolic cornerstone in our own lives was seen as equally important. If our lives are built on a firm foundation of honesty and truth, our relationships with other people will be honest and true. If we build our lives as solidly as well as we build a building, then we will be proud of the result and proud of properly building our lives. The symbolism in our ceremony reflects the same feeling for our lives. We will use some tools today to check this symbolic cornerstone represented by this plaque. A square to find out if the sides of the stone have been made smooth and square. A plumb to see if it's correctly placed in the ground. And a level to see if the top is actually level and ready to build upon. These tools we apply to our lives as well. We want others to rely on our honesty and our truthfulness just as much as we want the cornerstone of this building to be properly made and properly placed. The square, the plumb, and the level can be symbols of us shaping <coughs> our lives by the square of morality, the plumb of integrity, and the level of truth. So watch for other symbols as we work through this ceremony. Our ancestors knew that the the basics of life, food and water, also had to include food for the spirit. We will dedicate this symbolic cornerstone with grains of wheat, the same wheat that we used to make bread, although now we call it corn. We will use wine, an ancient symbol of spiritual refreshment, and we will use olive oil because it is a symbol of happiness and joy. Today you will see us dedicate this symbolic cornerstone by pouring out corn, by mixing it with wine and with oil. Taken together, they are a symbol that whatever we do, building a building or building our own lives, we have to take care of the human spirit as well as providing or the necessities of life. So I invite you now to watch this ancient symbolic
symbolic ceremony. Now, this same basic ceremony was used to lay the cornerstone of the United States Capitol building, the Supreme Court building, and the capital of our own state in Sacramento. The part I'm playing was in 1783 done by President George Washington, who was master of his Masonic Lodge when he laid the cornerstone of the Capitol. So just as Brother George did, we will now proceed to honesty, integrity, and truth in all we do. Will the officers please take their station? Foundations of Freemasonry in California were laid even before we were granted statehood. Masonry was so important to our early center, settlers, so important in their daily lives, that one of the first institutions built after their homes was a Masonic Lodge. It has been an important part of the history of our state ever since. The growth of many of our towns and cities was often coincident with the development of an active Masonic presence. And such is the case here in Orange. One of the most visible and utilized structures right here in Orange has to be this Masonic Center. Often we cause to commemorate these buildings which housed our early lives. We have just seen an event rededicating a building which has, has been home to Orange Masons for 125 years. So now today, at the request of the Lodge and the Worshipful Master, we shall take the pleasure to rededicate this building to the purposes and ideals which were expressed in the original dedication, and to rededicate ourselves to the pledges made during that same ceremony. Before entering upon any great or important undertaking, we should always enjoy support. Let us therefore unite with the Grand Chaplain in the address to the throne of grace. Father, Supreme Grand Master, we stand and praise your holy name. Grant that your favor and blessing be always in families of Orange Grove Lodge and this building in which they meet. May the masons of this lodge receive the assistance of your Holy Spirit, that they may continue to serve their community and each other as a visible symbol of charity and brotherly love for decades more. This, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> Brother Grand Treasurer. It has ever been the custom of the craft that certain memorials of the period in which the building was erected were deposited in a cavity beneath the stone, so that in the lapse of ages, of the elements, the violence of man, or the slow but certain ravages of time should lay bare its foundations, an enduring record may be found by unending industry of the free and accepted masons. Has such a deposit now been prepared? Grand Master has. The very articles of which it is composed are safely enclosed in the capsule of the board. From the Grand Secretary. Please read an accounting of the items in the cast. Today's edition of the Orange County Register. Sign-in sheets. 
from today's event. Roster of members of the Masonic Lodge, the Order of Eastern Star, the International Order of Job's Daughters for Girls, the International Order of Rainbow, and the International Order of Dean Lake. A March 2000 trestle board of this lodge's photographs of the current lodge officer and a list of the Grand Lodge officers. Well, the Grand Treasurer, you will now see that the capsule is deposited in its proper place. And may the great architect of the universe, in his wisdom, grant that ages upon ages will pass ere it be seen again. David Fadd, the son of our Grand Bible will have to place the capsule. to order, Grand Master, and find that the, low, the stone has been laid in a manner creditable for each of craft. What a junior, Grand Warden. What is the jewel of your office? Palm Grand Master. Then you will apply the jewel of your office to the stone and see if it has been properly adjusted. I have obeyed your order, Grand Master, and find that the stone has been properly adjusted. Our duty having been faithfully and skillfully performed, I now reaffirm that this cornerstone is true, trusty, The edifice in which it is anchored continue to be devoted to the spreading of useful knowledge 
to the practice of unceasing and unostentatious charity and to the inculcation of fraternity and goodwill. The fraternity of free and accepted Masons, looking ever to the goodness and compassion of the great architect of the universe, rededicates this edifice with a symbolic, op symbolic offering of corn, wine, and oil. As our brethren of old, Use the corn of nourishment. May this corn symbolize the continued nourishment of Freemasonry in this lodge and in this. House. <coughs> May the great giver of all good enable all who come through this building to constantly be blessed with that refreshment of which this wine is emblematic. May the blessings of heaven descend upon this and all good works. May our beloved fraternity long exist, pour forth the oil of joy upon the hearts of the widow, the father, and the distress. In the name of the great architect, to whom we offer all honor and glory, I do solemnly rededicate this building to Freemasonry. In the name of the holy Saints John, I do solemnly rededicate this building to virtue. In the name of the whole fraternity, I do solemnly rededicate this building to universal benevolence. Brother Principal Architect, I now place in your care these tools of operative masonry until again called for. Worshipful Master, ladies, brethren, and friends, today is 
is a great day to make prayer. We are celebrating the 125th anniversary of this lodge. Orange Grove Lodge number 293. Now simply having been around that long is a profound accomplishment. But if we think about it more carefully, it isn't the age of the lodge that matters as much as the impact. It and the Masons who have met here year after year have meant to this fabulous community. Much has changed since this lodge first received its charter. Rows upon rows of houses filled with mothers, Fathers and children have replaced rows upon rows upon rows upon rows of orange A real thriving city has developed. And masonry has been a central part of that story. But as we know, the story of masonry was first told in the Men who believed in freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and the right to each and every child to the best and finest free public education. It goes without saying that for an individual, a mason can assist another, convince those around him that ours is a fraternity that promotes good, strong, and healthy lives. And teach the community that when Masons join hands together, just as the brethren of this lodge have done for the past 125 years, we add to the richness of this wonderful existence and experience that we all call That is the true story of Orange Grove Lodge number 293. The true story about promoting the public welfare, promoting responsible citizenship, and giving masonry some of its finest members year after year. And you members are some of our best heroes. For without you keeping this lodge as a vibrant beacon of Masonic light, this community would be a far different place than it is today. Throughout the past 125 years, this lodge has impacted this city of Orange, contributed to its most cherished institutions, and served to make good men better, to make young men into mature men, to make Masons out of hundreds of men who came knocking at the door, seeking what Masonry has to offer. And each knocking was heard. Each knock was answered. And each new Mason knelt at the same altar the same way. Yes, my brethren, you can be proud of your accomplishment. 125 years of service was a long time. Two world wars have been fought. Our ancestors weathered the Great Depression. Men traveled here with their families from the devastation in Oklahoma that we've come to call the Dust Bowl. Man has walked on the moon and <coughs> Yes, our brother Walt Disney <coughs> lived to see a land of fantasy he always imagined become not just a reality, but an iconic destination spot. This lodge witnessed
witness all of that through the eyes of each and every member. You deserve today to feel proud. Congratulations to all of you. And thank you for inviting us as your guests here today. Thank you.
creation of this material building inspire within each of us a rededication of our hearts and minds to the teachings and obligations of our kind and gentle Christ. If you will please rise, grand chapter, will now present. Now and forevermore. Amen. So vote it be.